Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I'm so thankful that you are here today to watch my live premiere. This is a recorded video that I made while I was finishing up the mini journal using the HP Instant Box that I had in my stash. I've also used some digital images from Calico Collage, some of my stencils, stamps, some of my gel prints and more. You'll probably notice that my voice and the video are not synced up and that is because I had a problem with my microphone when I recorded the video and so I'm going back in and doing a voiceover. So right here at the beginning I'm showing you the charm that is on the journal. I added that. My mother made this journal charm for something else and I ended up adding it to the journal. The first page that I have here is a mop-up page that I made during the live stream last week. And now I'm using the Henna Rose rubber stamp in black jet, jet black archival ink to go around the edges. I like doing this because I can add just a little touch of decorative edge to the pages and yet it doesn't really interfere with the writing space. I've got the little daisies rubber stamp that I colored with watercolor pencils and then I've got some little bit of hymnal pages and some lace. I'm going to use some Fabri-Tac glue to adhere the lace on the corners and then I will adhere the music over the top of the lace. I'm using the bottom of the bottle to help smooth out that glue. It's kind of handy that way you don't get glue on your fingers. <laughs> I've also got the labels that I have stamped on some white cardstock here and I do a bunch of those ahead of time. I'll show you here in just a moment how I add them to my uh, little envelope that I use to store all of my little pieces of words or potential word items. And I'm going to stamp this with the hope, believe, and it's part of the Believe Through Faith Quartet that I'm going to put in here. Again, using the Jet Black Archival ink. Remember when you're stamping just to press firmly straight up and down. Let it rest on the paper for a moment for that ink to transfer. Don't rock your stamp back and forth. That will cause it to blur and also get lines if it's a small stamp. Now that this side is done, we're going to flip it over. And on this side, I had some book pages and a couple of images from Calico Collage. I like using her fussy cut elements in different sizes. And to do that, what I'll do is I will, on my printer, choose to pick the five and a half inch page instead of an eight and a half by eleven when it prints it and that gives me a variety of different sizes that I can use. I'm using a Lean's Tacky Glue because it's paper to paper and I find that if I just use a small amount it doesn't warp my paper. If you ever notice that you're warping your paper you're probably using way too much glue. Use less. I'm explaining here that the words were stamped on strips of paper that I had left over. So it's kind of handy to keep those strips. So that's the first page that I made. And I'm putting away my supplies. It's always good to put things back where they belong so you can find them again later on. I'm trying to do that more and more. You would think that I would know all about this for doing this for years and years and years. But you know, sometimes you just got to learn again. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got a book page and a couple of Calco Collage images as well as some scrapbook paper. So this is one of those projects that if you have some pretty nice looking book pages but they're really brittle, well you can glue them to another piece of paper and get a little bit of that vintage feel in your journal. I've applied glue to the scrapbook paper and again this is a great way to use up your scrapbook paper in your journals. A bone folder sure comes in handy when you are pressing paper together. It helps smoosh that glue out to the edges. 
I'm going to use some Distress Ink Walnut Stain to go around the edges on both sides of the paper. That will be the book page side and the scrapbooking paper side. And I try to fold my pages and then give it a little bit of distress ink so I know where the center mark is, especially if you're trying to get perfect placement of elements that you're going to add to your journal page. Hey, speak up in the chat for those of you that are here. I would love to have y'all fellowship with each other. There's my nails. I forgot to show those to y'all at the beginning. <laughs> You can chat with each other, and I won't have Junkie Joe live, but you guys can chat with each other. I'm using Distress Oxide Picked Raspberry in a blending tool to go around the edges of the page just to add a little bit of color, and it may be difficult to see on the screen, but it does make a difference, especially when you see the journal in person. Next, I'm going to use the Henna Rose rubber stamp to go around the border and down the middle so that it adds a little bit of decoration over the book page. So you don't have to have fancy papers to make a journal. You can use book pages and add some color, add some rubber stamping. This is an image from Her Allure from Calico Collage. It was a page that I had left over in my stash, so I just decided to cut the pieces to fit on the page. So I'm just putting it a little bit on the right-hand side of the page there. And then I'm going to get a piece of coffee dyed text weight paper that I had in my stash and layer that over the top. But before I layer it, I'm going to stamp on it with the uh, corner roses rubber stamp and picked raspberry. I like doing little accents like this with colored ink. I just think it adds just a little bit more uh, dimension and texture to the journal. I've got another calico collage image that I'm going to glue down here in the corner. I was trying to figure out which one I wanted. This is from the Valentine set. I thought that the Valentine images matched really well with the fairy tale and with the roses, fairy tale roses kits from Calico Collage. Do check the description box below for links to the products that I use, and especially if you're going to patronize myself or uh, Calico Collage, we greatly appreciate your support. I'm adding a uh, so be extraordinary, or uh, yeah, I think that's what that says <laughs> on the screen. And I uh, like using my stamped images. Henry went to the hardware store and picked up some paint chips for me. So I was gluing one of those down here as a belly band. Because a paint chip usually has a coated paper, a Lean's Tacky glue doesn't always stick to it. So I'm using Fabri-Tac to glue down the image. And then I'm going to give a little bit of glue at the top and the bottom to make this a belly band on my page. I've got a piece of cardstock here that I had in my stash, and so I'm going to layer up some papers. This pink page is from the Enchanted Rose Journal Kit, and it was already cut to that size, so it worked out perfectly that I could put that down as a mat. And then I used the unicorn image that was also from the Valentine set from Calico Collage. And then I add a piece of avocado dyed paper that I had in my stash. If you didn't know, I, I saved my avocado skins in Ziploc bags and put them in the freezer until I felt I had enough to boil the avocado skins and then dye paper. That's another way to alter paper if you don't have traditional paints or supplies to make your own. Dye it. Just gluing that together. <laughs> and it's probably odd to see my voice in the corner. I couldn't figure out a way to edit the video where I could just crop down to the image of where I was working to get my face out. Maybe next time I'll figure that out. So there's a little journal card. So you have writing space on the back and it fits right in the belly band. And then on the other side, I've got a couple of calico collage images there. I'm going to grab a book page and we're going to make pockets. You know, you don't have to have pockets that are 100% visible. Oh wait, maybe I'm not doing pockets. Not this page. 
<laughs> There's another page that I do pockets. <laughs> this time I'm just collaging over the top of the page. I forgot to mention at the beginning, this journal measures four and a quarter inches by six inches and has a two inch spine. And again, was made from a Hewlett Packard instant ink box that I had. I've got these little tear off note uh, stickers that I've had in my stash for a while now. They're like from Happy Planner, I think it is. So I'm grabbing two of those and I will go around the edge with Distress Ink Walnut Stain and separate them so I can do both. Adds a little bit of color to it with, you know, kind of takes away that stark white just a little bit. And then I will adhere these down. I will add glue to the back sides even though there is some sticky, like a sticky note at the top. Now I've got a piece of lace and a couple more words. Love flows quietly and always dream big are two of the stamp words sets that I'm using here. And because I'm doing with the lace, I'm using the Fabri-Tac glue to hold that lace into place. I like that the Fabri-Tac dries clear. Now I'm going to add some bling. Robin's been after me. Add some bling. Add some lace. And I don't always do so because it does take a little extra effort. And I don't have that much lace or bling, but I have a little bit and I'm trying to use it up. So it made a good dent using the bling for this journal. <laughs> Alright, so there's another page completed. I'm just showing you what both pages look like. Similar, a couple of different images. Alright, so now I'm going to get the next page ready. I'm trying to do good about clearing off my desk in between each one. And that way I have a fresh slate to work with. So this time I have some handmade paper that I made. I shred paper and I put it through a blender and then put it in the water bath and use a frame that I made and this particular paper I pressed it between one of my stencils and when I did it added a, an embossed image to the paper so now I'm going to use picked raspberry and just rub it over that raised area and you'll see the patterns appear on the paper I'm going to do that on both sides I like the way you can kind of just see that pattern subtly come up. I've got some more images from Calico Collage. I believe this is from her shabby, chic, small ephemera set. And I can't remember if I shrank this page or printed it as is. I have a little file pocket that I printed a whole bunch of images and then just stuck them down inside. Now I have a book page that I have folded in half and glued together and I'm scoring a half an inch on the bottom and on the right hand side and folding those over so that I have a tuck spot that I can make out of this. I've got some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. I think this was a silk pink and from the Enchanted Rose Kit I had another pink. I'm just kind of spraying that all over the page using my heat tool from Ranger Ink. It's a silent heat tool. If you've ever watched me during my lives or other videos, it doesn't make a lot of noise so you don't hear it on camera and I really like that. And especially if I want to stay up late, I don't wake up Henry <laughs> while I'm crafting. Alright, so now I'm going to use the Henna Rose and the Jet Black Archival Ink to go around and add some pattern over that book page text. I've got the corner roses rubber stamp that I have fussy cut and colored with watercolor pencils and now I'm just ripping that corner tuck spot to contour with 
the stamp image. Now I'm adding some Distress Ink Walnut Stain. I'll adhere these together with the Lean's Tacky Glue and place it on the right hand side as a corner tuck spot. I like having a variety of different styles of pockets in my journals. Now I'm going to make a journal card here in just a moment and you know save those scraps, save those bits and pieces. I had some cardstock that was cut for a different project but it just so happened was the right size to make a little journal card out of it so that's what I'm going to use and then I had some other scraps that had been dented because of where they came from, Canvas Corp brands, and so I did some rubber stamping. I stamped uh, different images on there. Here I'm doing the henna rose in the picked raspberry and going all the way around the edges. I think I really like how soft this look. It's so feminine and delicate. That's the chamomile rubber stamp set from my uh, apothecary collection of rubber stamps and I've layered that up onto the stamped background and I'm grabbing my little words out of my little pocket and I'll stick that in the pocket and I forgot to add some bling so we're going to add some bling to the top here this is some adhesive bling that I've had for a really long time and I'm trying to use it up and it comes in strips. And now here's a piece that I showed that you can make your own labels by using, in this case it was some scribble sticks and a piece of coffee dyed cardstock that I rounded the corners. So think outside the box on making your own little labels as well. And here I'm using some of the small ephemera labels from Calico Collage. And I've got a little piece of lace. I left it as it is. It's an ivory piece of lace and added that to the page. I've got one of these tear off uh, notepads that I've had in my stash for a while now. And I'm going to grab some washi tape and put down a bead of glue on both pieces of paper and then adhere those together using the washing tape, washi tape. And then it will flip up so it's kind of a hinged look to it. I forgot to add some distress inks to the back side, so I'm doing that rather quickly. I've got another little label image, and I decided to glue it to where you can't see it until you flip up that piece. So I'm using the flip to kind of gauge where it should be, straightening it a little bit. So that page is now done. All right, so we've got three pages done now. Got a little bit more to go. This video took me about an hour and a half to do all of the processes that I've done. And I've decided to edit it down to be about half of that, so it's about 42 minutes. What's everybody been working on? Have you had a great week? I've been busy working at our embroidery shop and printing things and trying to get out orders. I did get a bunch of orders out last week and I'll be working on some more this week as well as some prizes. So if you're waiting for those, they're coming. It just takes me some time to go through it. So here I've got another book page that I'm just getting all the pieces prepared. Those strips that you see on the right hand side, those are from a gel print that I made. And when I scanned in the gel print, I decided to play around with the colorways. And I was able to take one gel print and make like six or seven, maybe more, colorways. And I made that to a digital download. So you can get that in my shop. I'm cleaning my hands. I use a, a, ba a container of uh, hand sanitizer to help get some of the ink off my hands sometimes. Alright, so now I'm trying to decide how to do this. And what I'm going to do is take those one inch strips and glue them all around the perimeter of the book page. So it's going around the top and go across the bottom. And then I'll fill in the middle uh, sides. And it is 
a smaller amount of paper because I feel like I can get more out of the strips than I could if I had just cut one piece of paper to fit. So there is a method to my badness sometimes. <laughs> and sometimes that's all you have is a little strip. Well, here's a way to use those strips up. You could take all of those strips that you have and make each side differently. So think about that as well as another option whenever you're making your journals. Maybe you cut a book page apart or another decorative paper and so you can use all those strips. Just because I'm doing it matchy-matchy doesn't mean you have to. <laughs> Right, I'm almost done adding all the strips and I'm using a pencil to mark where I need to cut it so if you're not a person that likes to do precise measurements you can use a pencil and just mark it and then cut it apart and it should fit relatively easily if you got it marked in the right spot. Alright so now we've got that hole in the middle. This is where I'm going to take the calico collage images and glue them to a book page to make pockets so that we can put journal cards behind these images. I don't like covering up calico collages images very often and so I try to figure out creative ways that I can see the full image but make something functional like a pocket out of it. So now what I'm going to do is just trim these out, leaving a border all the way around of book page so that I can make the gussets of the book page into a pocket. It's about half an inch all the way around. And I'm going to fold one edge first. That's going to be the leading edge of my side pocket. And I'll glue that into place so it doesn't move around and then I will fold all the other edges in after I trim the corners and then I'll glue this down on my new background paper that I made. This is also handy if you only have a small amount of paper that you want to turn into a pocket and you need it to be the full width that it's possible to be well just add a either strips one inch strips or add a full book page to it and then you'll be able to make a pocket out of it. Again cycling those book pages. So now I'm just going to glue that into place and repeat the same on the unicorn image. Trying to clean up my space a little bit. <laughs> I really enjoyed working with these papers from Calco Collage. I love the colors in them and I thought it blended really well with my gel prints that I made and other little elements that I found in my stash. It's kind of fun to use up all these pieces that I've had for a while in some cases. I Believe in Magic is a rubber stamp image that I'm putting over there on the right. Expect great things is going on the left. Now I need some journal cards and I pre-made these. It's just some cardstock that I layered up one of those tear-off notepad papers, put a little piece of fabric on the edge and use the notes rubber stamp at the top. The back side is blank so you have plenty of writing space there. So even though we made such a pretty decorative page, we still have some writing space on it. I got another pocket. This one is a gel print that I made a while back and I have added some strips all the way around to make it a pocket. There's a book page that I gel printed on and I think there's two layers of book page there plus the little tabs that I added. Just kind of smoothing that out a little bit. Got another one of Norella's uh, Valentine images that I'm adding. 
trying to get it in the right placement. Got another little word phrase. It says imagine. And I have a piece of scrapbook cardstock that I'm adding another one of Norella's Valentine images to. She has cats in them and dogs and unicorns and a horse. I can't remember what else. She had a bunch of different images in there. Uh, just, they were just really sweet. I'm using the Wild 4 stencil and Distress Ink uh, Raspberry. No, what is that one called? That one's called Seedless Preserves in a blending brush. I just like adding the Distress Inks like this to make a little background. See how fast that was? So now I'm going to hear that down in the center of that panel on the right. Glue that into place. Let's add some uh, stamped images. This is from the flax that I watercolored and fussy cut it out. And I'm going to make that a tuck spot on the right hand side. So just adding a little bit of glue to help hold it in place. And then I've got another one of my words that has been stamped inside a label and I have some dyed fabric that was made using Tattered Angel's Glimmer Mist. I'll get a little container of liquid can go in without leaking, add a little bit of water, dump in a little bit of Tattered Angel's Glimmer Mist and then glue, uh, soak them for a little bit then hang them up to dry. I need to make some more. I'm almost out of all my dyed fabrics. I'm going to add some bling. I'm trying to use it up. Are you liking this? Is this giving you some ideas for layering on your papers? This is another calico collage image, cardstock, and rubber stamped word. And then there's another page. Same concept, just different images. Alright, so now I'm going to look and see what is next? I'm testing to see how they're going to fit. And I think I have enough. So now we're going to work on the covers. I decided to make two journal inserts. So they've got Midori covers. Or the outside is a Midori cover with a band. And so I've got journal inserts that I'm putting in there. So I'll have two journal inserts. I think there are seven folded pages that I'm putting in there. The outside is some scrapbook cardstock that I had in my stash. And then I also had a gel print that I thought would look pretty for the inside that was on a piece of book page. So I'm just going to adhere those together. Again with some Aline's Tacky Glue. get that all lined up. I think it's always better to have your paper be a little bit larger than what you need so you can trim it down than to, for it to be too small. <laughs> and then you have to figure out how to fill the gap. I have some of that same cardstock left over so I decided to trim it down. I was measuring my others to figure out which size to be. So it's two and a half inches by three and three quarters of an inch is what I'm putting in my pockets for the inside of the journal insert. So we'll go around the edges with some distressed ink walnut stain again. And then I decided that because this was kind of an ivory cardstock with a brown, grayish brown print, I got out some of the distressed ras picked raspberry dis distressed oxide ink and a blending tool and just added a little bit of color all over. It's really soft. It isn't, you know, a really outstanding color. It's just enough to kind of give it a blush and add a little bit of pink to it. I'm going to add some strips to the back of the pocket so that they fit my journal cards that I want to use in the inside and back covers. So again, it's another way to use up those book pages. 
You know, I, I like to cut them into strips. Sometimes I'll use a whole book page. It just kind of depends on what I'm going after. Since this was cardstock, I didn't feel like I needed the additional bulk of a whole nother piece of paper behind it. Trim those corners. And then I'll fold in all those edges and since I am adhering to a gel print I'm going to use the Fabri-Tac glue again so I know it will stay in place. had some rain here today. We've been needing a little bit of rain so I'm glad I don't have to go out and water my yard yet. <laughs> it's made me sleepy today. Alright, we got the pockets installed. I'm just checking to make sure that I didn't have it too close to the spine. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is make a couple journal cards. I had some coffee dyed card stock and I'm going to use the Corner Roses stamp along with the Picked Raspberry in the corners. I like the, adding the little pattern and yet you still have plenty of writing space. You can write over the stamped image if you want. Next I have a little piece of lace so I'm just going to cut a couple of pieces there and I'm going to use some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist to alter the color so if you don't have the right shade of pink for your journal well then make your own. I don't buy colored lace anymore I'll only buy white or ivory because I know I can change the color. I can dye it. I can spray it. I can run my ink pad over it. There's lots of different ways to alter the color of those pieces so you don't have to keep a whole stash full of every color of the rainbow. Yes it does take a little bit of time so we've got to colorize it and then you've got to heat it up and dry it. I was looking for another color so I used a couple of colors of pink and a I thought I had a bottle of some walnut stain uh, or coffee that I made and I couldn't find it until afterwards. <laughs> Once I had chosen to get a different color I found the bottle. <laughs> okay that was pretty pink I was using and party pink was another color I used. I'm using a paintbrush to kind of move it around so I don't burn my fingers and it also kind of helps soak up some of the tattered angels that was on the page. Now I'm keeping that heat tool moving. It may not look like so in the video, but you don't want to burn your paper or your fabric. So go quickly and keep it moving. Alright, so I'm going to snip this little piece of trim that was given to me. I think that's all I had left was this little piece. I've already used another piece in the journal. Using the Fabri-Tac glue to adhere the lace and then I'll use it again to attach the little pieces of trim. We've got to have some more bling, so I'm going to get that out here in a moment. Just to add a little bit, sometimes it doesn't cooperate. I like using my scissors because they have a sharp tip on them. Alright, so we're putting that together. Sometimes the pocket didn't want to cooperate. I've got some more words that I decided to get out and a piece of fabric to glue down in those blank areas. 
So I thought it would just help kind of bring it all together. It's more of that Tattered Angels dyed fabric. I need to make some more. I was trying to decide if I wanted to add some more flowers behind those and I got out a couple and after kind of playing around with it I didn't like the way it looked so I decided not to use them. I could have but I didn't. Like nope don't don't like it didn't work out right. I didn't it's not what I wanted <laughs> so I'm just gonna put it right in the middle. It's okay I can change my mind. <laughs> had to trim that it just it was too wonky <laughs> can't have it wonky <laughs> or too wonky <laughs> all right just smoothing those out all right so let's do the cover I got a doily here and a piece of lace and I was looking at my sample to decide how I want to do it I was adding this distress ink to the paper doily first sometimes that works really well and sometimes you need to add some more which I do and I've got a piece of ivory lace I'm just trimming it down to fit now I'm going to put it in my spray box and spray it with some Tattered Angels again. I was trying to find different colors that I wanted to use to mix together. Get a little bit of the pink, I think, in a moment after I find it. <laughs> I've moved a few things around and so I had a little a bin that I put some Tattered Angels in and it wasn't working out very well because it was too deep. I couldn't see the labels. Alright, we're going to dry this. Now, be careful because that's kind of a polyester rayon mixed lace so you don't want to keep your heat tool in one place very long. It will melt or curl or burn. So I'm constantly moving it. And then I'm moving it out of the wet Tattered Angels so that it has a little better opportunity to dry. Alright, now that this is dry, I'm going to assemble. I think I'm going to end up putting some more Distress Ink on the doily. Yep, I decided it needed it. It wasn't quite standing out the way that I wanted. So I'm going to layer the floral image again from Calco Collage on top of the paper doily. Using my bone folder to smooth it. Alright, make sure you got it right side up. <laughs> I've glued things on upside down many a time, so I try to check more often now. And they got a piece of lace here. They've got the word journal. That's from the Journal Quartet rubber stamps onto some coffee dyed paper. Some Fabri-Tac glue on both of those. Then we've got another journal cover made. I'm putting a uh, block over the word so it'll hold in place. Now I'm going to add some bling all the way around that digital image because I thought it just needed a little extra sparkle. So I'm cutting each individual gem from the backer sheet strip so I can place them where I want them. I still have a little bit of that sheet left of that bling. You would think as much as I've used that it would be a lot smaller, but there's still quite a bit on there. It was a good value for the money. Alright, so there is the journal cover all finished. And here is another journal cover I made. Same concept. So now I'm just going to kind of sort out the pages, kind of thinking about which order that I want each one to be, where, which one do I want first, which one do I want in the middle. Now I'm just going to start stacking them all up. 
making sure that they're in the center of the journal cover the way that I want them to be. Once I've stacked all the pages, I always try to flip back through it really quick. Number one, you need to make sure that none of your pages are upside down. Number two, it's in the order that you want it to be in. I'm going to repeat that process on the second journal. I didn't have a template made for this journal because of its size, so I just grabbed a piece of book page and cut it to be the same height as the journal that I'm working in. And then I folded that in half and marked it with dots, so basically three spots is where I want to poke holes. I've got some wax linen thread in the Tim Holtz craft pick here and a large sewing needle. I do carry the sewing needles in my shop so if you don't have one and you're trying to find one that you like head over to my shop. You get two for five dollars in my shop plus shipping which I feel is a pretty fair price. Alright so I'm just marking the dots where I think I want them. I'm going to poke through the folded page and now it's ready to be used as a guide for poking my holes in my cover. So you want to make sure that your pages are in a V and that you're poking through the V portion of your journal. I'm going to thread up my needle with wax linen thread, go from the inside around to the top outside, and then holding that tail up out of the way, go back through that center hole, come up from the bottom, to the inside, then slip underneath that first stitch. Try not to get hung up on other things. <laughs> and make sure it's tied on the outside and the inside and tie a knot. And I usually tie two to three knots. And I'm just going to trim off that end a little bit. You could use charms on those ends or you could cut them off flush with your journal. Repeating this process again for the other side or the other journal. These turned out really cute and quite fluffy. Uh, it's substantial to wear it, hold it in your hand. As you can tell, it's a, a sturdy little journal. Doing the pamphlet stitch again. Slip under and tie. Cut off the excess. Alright, so there's the second journal made. And now I'm just going to put them inside the cover and do a quick flip through. I hope that you enjoyed seeing, you know, how I put this together. Go see the first video to see how the cover for the Midori style cover was made with an HP Instant Box. And be inspired. Do something creative. Use your supplies that you have on hand. Uh, maybe it's an excuse to go shopping, but I'm not telling you that you, you should, you know, go overspend. Only buy what you think you'll need. I was talking to one of my friends and I said, you know, it's easy to go out and just buy, 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 but you can get very overwhelmed and have so many things that you don't know where to begin. So buy only a little that you know that you're going to use right away. Lots of layers in this little journal, so lots of little writing space throughout. So one thing I like about my journals is I try to make sure that there's writing space throughout the whole journal, whether it be just enough space to write, you know, a few words or a whole paragraph. So it just kind of depends on the person. A little flip up. Did some stamping, stenciling, used digital images. Just a variety of different things throughout the whole journal. Well, I ask that you give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends if you found it helpful or inspiring. Hey, do something creative this week. Go out and celebrate. Be with some friends. I hope that you had a lovely week and I will see you next week when I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe some gel printing. All right. Thank you so much for everybody for watching. Y'all have an amazing day. Lots of love to you. Bye, everybody.